Hello, welcome to this Blender tutorial. Please subscribe and give me feedback on uh, the video that follows. Tell me what you like, tell me what you didn't like, and tell me how I can improve it. In today's tutorial, we'll be making a, a simple ceiling fan. Please join me and follow along. The cube, I'll get rid of the cube by pressing X and, and then deleting it. Select an object and the object that we'll be selecting will be a circle. Right, this circle, for a reason I'll explain later, will be actually increasing the actual vertices of this circle to 33 because it just works better. Right, and just minimize that. The next thing we're doing is we're going to go into um, the size of the circle and we're going to make it 0 0.03 0 0.03 all this does is make a, a three centimeter circle um, this is going to be the shaft of the actual ceiling fan next thing we're going to do is go to edit mode by pressing the tab key a to select all if everything's not already selected and I'm just going to fetch up the actual ceiling fan as you can see we've got a flat area here and we've got this with the holes in it and then it goes flat again so we'll do that right, so right. let me just put that one to one side To actually aid you in uh, making a ceiling fan or something like that, it is always handy to actually put your reference photo on another screen or in the lower tab like I have here, so you can actually fetch it up from time to time to have a look, just to make sure you're on the right track. So, select E, scale, oops, I made it, A, E, scale, that's the flat area on the bottom, E, scale, just do it slightly. The reason you're putting two, the three loops together here is to actually produce a sharp edge when you subdivide it. So E scale. Right. Now we've got that shape. What I'm going to do is E Z. In fact, no, I'm not. I'm just going to move this in the Z direction. So G Z. and that makes the shape and the holes in the veins are going to be cut into there so E then S to scale that makes the flat area then E then Z that makes the side I right, say so when we subdivide it if you're doing a sharp change it's always handy to actually put in a two or three cuts. I'm just going to put one there just to make that sharp flat area. I did that using control on R. I'm going to select this edge by pressing the Alt key which selects them all and then extrude with E and then G to move. G is the go key and then press Z to move in the upwards direction. So G, Z And then what I'm going to do is control R to put a couple of cuts there. And I want this to curl over slightly so I'm not going to actually put a sharp edge in there. So I'll select that edge again. So E and scale until you get to about the right size. Which say it's about there. All right. When we actually created this, we made it 33. The reason we did that is quite simple. But I'll show you it now. So, Control R with that one. Move your mouse button at one to cut that into two, or start again by Control and Z to actually undo. Control R, then just press the two key. 
that divide subdivides it by two. Right clicking fixes it. I'm going to select this ring. If we wanted to actually move something inside the lines, so it doesn't actually go beyond the lines. So what's this? Press G once, and that does that to that. Just undo that. If you press G G, then it moves inside its constraints, which is very very useful. And I'll show you what we're going to use this for in a second. So I'm going to move that to the edge, about there. And then this one I'm going to move so GG again and move it slightly down like that. Then I'm going to go on face select, which is up here. Here you've got face select, line select, and point select. But we're going to be using face select. Hold down the alt key. Right, that, for some reason, the actual alt key is not showing up on the actual screen recording. Let me just figure this one out. Right, I'm using Karnak for the actual screen key, so I'm just going to Karnak and see why the alt key isn't going. And I think it's because it's not far enough from the bottom. So I'll move that up slightly. Save that. Back into Blender. Let's see if the tab key is showing up. So now the tab key is showing up. Right. So select that edge, tab key is showing up, but the alt key still isn't showing up. Oh, that's no good. Why does it do this from time to time? Right, don't know what happened there, but seems to be working now. Right, to actually select this ring, Hold down the Alt key and press the left mouse button, and that selects us all these edges. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select checker deselect. As you can see, that that selects every other one. But we've got two selected here, so I'm just going to alter this to three. And then what you've got, you've got that one, that one, and it misses two. And as you can see, that's quite even. The next key I'm going to press is the I key and then indent that slightly by moving the mouse. Press the I key again, indent that slightly and then I'm going to extrude this by pressing the E key in the Z direction. Take it slightly up to get a little bit of thickness. And then the next thing I'm going to do is press the X key and delete them faces. As you can see, now we've got some holes. Which is obviously where the fan gets cooled itself, or the motor of the fan does. So, and there we have it. That there is the body of the fan. Right, the next thing we need is the actual motor coming down. Or the, the shaft coming down that holds the light. So I'm just going to grab this edge by pressing the edge select, holding down the alt key and then pressing the left mouse button. So E to extrude in the Z direction. I'm just going to take this up slightly. Then um, and that there is the thickness of the actual shaft. And I'm just going to leave that. And I'm going to do the same with the top. So I'll press the Alt and the left mouse button down, scale it up slightly because it's a bit small that, and then E in the Z direction. There we go. And what you normally have out of these lamps is you'd have a shaft coming from the ceiling, going straight through and the lights are hung off the bottom. So that's what we're going to do next. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to the shaft is going to be about that size. So I'm going to select edge select. Select that. Then shift and D to duplicate that. And press enter to fix it. Press the P key. By selection. 
and that's now separated that off so I'm going to go into there and I'm going to call this the I'm going to call this circle one motor right. if you look here there's little I next to the actual um, oh, just click this and then that disappears right. the next thing we've got this is going to be our uh, shaft that goes to the ceiling so select this and then scale it in the Z direction the reason it's done that is because the origin is in the same place as the other one so control Z to undo that select your drum, set the origin and the center of the mass of the volume and it moves the center back to where it should be if you actually set the orange into the mass of the surface then it puts it in the center of the actual object we'll move this to the actual um, back to that point there so its location is up there so if we change that all to zero then it puts it central down there scale this in the Z direction this and now it does around that point point. and we have the shaft that goes to the ceiling right click smooth shade that and there's a shaft if we make the motor appear we'll call this one shaft before we go it's a, always a good idea to actually start naming things it helps you later on because then I can see that that's the motor if you unhide the eye and we've got the motor going out the shaft coming through from the ceiling and out the bottom so G and Z, oh sorry, if you press the Z key you can, you've can. you got different things you can actually do, you've got wireframe, rendered, look dev and solid, I'm going to go into solid for this, G and Z to move that up in the up direction, and if you look at his uh, picture, you can see what we're doing here we're making that I'm just going to smooth shade that just make that look a bit better so, as you can see we've roughly got that right the shaft in the center there is fixed because this is the bit that the fan goes on and that spins round so, next thing we do is G Z move it a bit higher and I'm just going to select this edge here tab key uh, tab key sorry alt and left click oh. the reason it's not working is because I'm on face select and I need to be on edge select so alt and left key E to extrude, S to scale, and that's the flat edge of the top of the uh, control housing. So scale, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to split that off because that's a different part. So press Alt and select all. P to select that and then if you select selection then that separates it off so I'm going to change that to be called control controls and that's the little box on the thing where all the switches are going to be so select that edge again control R and we'll scale that down like I say when we subdivide this to make it uh, look better we scale this up it's always a good uh, idea to do this because where you want a sharp edge as in on this edge that's a bit annoying if I'm going a bit close there you can see half the picture is disappearing right the way, way you cure this is you go on to view and where are we? The focal length there is 50 mils. 
starting clip um, is uh, like 10 centimeters yeah but we're a lot closer than that so if we change that to zero as you can see now it doesn't vanish when we go close we've got to go in fact I don't think you can go close enough now because we've changed that to zero All right I'll make it point zero one We've got some striation there, as you can see, that's called other problems. So, point one. Oh, the devil. There we go. Oh, that's very odd, that is. The reason we'll, we'll get rid of that by putting a, a loop and shrinking it down and another loop in here control R and scale it up scale hmm very odd again, every day is a school day point zero one let's try that nah that makes it better right, right. back into that so we're now back into the controls. Go into edit mode by pressing tab. As you can see, this is in the way. That, that's why the hide feature is very handy. This here, the motor housing is just in the way because we can't see what we're working on. So select the motorizing and just hide it. And then we select the control again, as we have done there. Go into edit mode by pressing the tab key. Select the edge, E to extrude, S to scale. I'll just put in a couple of loops there because I want this very sharp edge. So E to extrude, Z in the direction. And I'll take it to about there. E to extrude. And I'm going to put type edge there. So one, E to extrude again. Put another one and E to extrude and scale and that's going to make a flat area so E to extrude and scale make a small and as you can see now what we've got there is we've got like a sharp edge so if we were to actually subdivide this then it makes it a gentle it won't make it that gentle I'll experiment and show you this in a second but I'll just what I'm going to do is I'm going to E to extrude, Z to move it down, and then I'm going to scale it, sorry, E to extrude, Z to send it down, E, Z, then S to scale and scale it down. As you can see, that's quite a sharp thing. It's not, it ain't got an edge that's slightly bowed or anything there. E scale. See it doesn't look very good. But if we were to subdivide this, add modifier, subdivide surface, and come out of edit mode. And then we control R there. Sorry. Control R in the middle and scale it out what you end up with is like a if I can show you like an arc shape and the more you actually subdivide this the more rounded it becomes and I'll just get rid of the subdivision on there for the minute That's his control box. Now on the control box, we want to have a a um, the little bit where the actual cable comes out of on the side, one on the side, one on the bottom. The one on the bottom controls the lights, and the one on the side I think controls the speed of the fan. Or it might be 
vice versa. So what I'm going to do is hide these both. So hide the shaft, hide the controls. Now I'm going to add a add a mesh, and the mesh I'm going to add is a cylinder. Right, I'm going to change the cylinder to 32 vertices. It already has. And then scale this in the Z direction. Oops, sorry. Scale in the Z. For this, I don't need the top and I don't need the bottom. So I'm just going to get rid of them by going to Edit Mode. Select the face, select the top, select the select the top, select the bottom, by all option. Bottom by holding the shift key down. Press the X key and then only faces because I want the edges to actually still exist. So select these edges. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to, 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 to check a deselect that's set to three I'm going to set that to two and as you can see selected every other one and then I'm going to go I to indent them take them in slightly and then I'm going to go E to extrude and S to scale And I'm going to scale that in the Z direction. Put it back in the. And then what I want to do is grab the top edge by pressing the Alt and left click while I'm selecting Edge Select. The same on the bottom, but this time I'm going to hold the Shift key down as well. For some reason, the Shift key isn't showing, but you left click and you can select both of those and then. E to extrude, sorry, Z, E to extrude, S to scale, see they're both selected and then what I'm just, what I'm making there is like a little ring and then if I right click and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to bridge edge loops and that just joins them together come out of edit mode and you get something there looks like a nail nut um, and that is just going to go around the cable as it comes out I'm going to select this edge on the inside here right. this here means you can let select more than one edge I'll click the click that on the edge there and it will only let you select the edges you want so see as it's there it selected the outside edge which I don't want and that it's very hard to see that let's go into that edge I know what I've done, yeah. That there is so you can select either side of the faces, and this here makes the actual individual edges visible. So make the individual edges visible until you see the black lines. Select the inner edge, and I'm going to scale this in the Z direction. And that just gives it that kind of shape, and that's its nut. And I'm just going to put a little rim on there, so I'm going to select all edges again. So E to extrude, S to scale, and put that little rim. And that just gives it a little bevel on either side, as you can see. So if I were to, uh, we'll just put a few extra loops in there, just to sharpen things up. One on that side, Control R, one on that side. 
and then if we actually use the subdiv subdivision modifier subdivide surface smooth it down and you get something that looks really real and quite good I'm just going to scale that up in the Z direction the old thing and then scale it down so it's small G Y move it to one side and I'm just gonna everything that I've hidden I'm gonna make it reappear and the shaft as you can see that's quite huge so G and Y move it so it's over the fan And then I'm going to move it in the down direction, G and Z. If we can go on the item here, as you can see, it's not very central. A good tip is just to actually, the X and the Y, because the actual center of the point is in the center of the shape, or its origin in the center, put them two to zero. And as you can see, that's now banging the center. So I'll scale this down scale this down and scale this down G and Z to move it into the center of there this is where the cord's going to come out so scale as you can see that hole's still a bit big so I'm going to go into that and scale that down so it's just a small hole tab to come out of that object select back in the other object now this cylinder we're going to call it the nut and scale that down G and Z to move it up in the up direction and there you have it that's where the cord's going to come out Just going to go into this and make this hole a little bit smaller by selecting the face select selecting all faces e to extrude edge to scale and I'm just going to scale that in the Z direction and as you can see I think you'll agree that looks just like what the real thing would look like you can give it a bit of colour if you want to get a bit of realism. Um, let's just put new, uh, make the base colour a grey. And we'll make it metallic. In fact, make it like an orangey colour, make it a bit golden or brassy coloured. Then take the roughness down. base colour make it that orangey because we give that a bit of a subsurface colour it should have a bit of a shine to it and I'll take the roughness down and take it off completely and the metal right up and then if I go into this mode here then as you can see that's a little golden stud on there Take the roughness up slightly, it's a little bit too shiny. No, it's not really brassy coloured, so that's it. And we'll call that, if you select on that clone, just name it brass or something like that. Well, that means that we can use that to actually colour anything else in. So if we were to actually select there, we could change that to brass, depending on what you did. but something wrong with that but uh, I'll, I'll figure it out in a minute <laughs> uh, let's get rid of the colour that's on that and I'll sort that out later on might be just not on smooth shader no it's on smooth shader Just add the brass colour so I can actually see what's wrong with this shape. 
there's something wrong with that. If I subdivide this, add modifier, subdivide surface. Now yeah, that's terrible. No, I think that shape's just wrong. just going to redo this shape because for some reason I've messed it up it's got bad topology it's just wrong so I'm just going to redo the control so select the control X to delete get rid of it um, I'll add in a mesh and the mesh that I'm going to add in is a cylinder scale it down G Z to move it, scale it, and scale it in the Z direction, scale, scale in the Z, G and Z, I don't know why that shape went wrong but sometimes they do, control R, just to subdivide this equally and then edge select face select E scale and G and Z so it matches it and scale it down control and R G and Z Let's make it a round shape well, there's a flat edge on here so I'm just going to control an R and then just move that up now looking from the side by pressing the 1 key and G and Z and subdivide that as well it's not nice and flat and that one as well. Let's have a look at this. Right, I'm going to subdivision and modifier subdivide surface. All right, so we'll look to see if this looks a lot better. If I were to add that metal colour to it, let's add the brass, smooth the surface. Yeah, I think you'll agree that's a lot better. The top of it's not very good, but that can be cured quite easily by we'll select that top face. X to delete it, only the face. And then what I'm gonna do is grab that edge. E and scale it down. And there you go. Nice rounded edge. Sometimes things just mess up. And it's hard to actually know why they do. Control R. And sometimes you just need to start again. And here we go. Let me subdivide that by two. I think you'll agree that's that's now a really small shape. Although I don't like that colour, so I'm going to actually get rid of the colour. Take it back to white. There we go for now. And there we go. Right. So we've done the actual control box, the little thing where the actual comes out of the bottom, and out the side we've got the same thing. So I'm just going to copy that again. I'll hit the one key to actually look from the orthographic view. Pressing the five key takes you in and out of orthographic perspective. So G. Sorry, wrong. Shift and D. In fact, if you do Alt and D, then they're using the same information. So you alter one, you alter them both. Press Enter. And then G and X to move that one to the side. I'm going to rotate that one by 90 degrees. So press R, then Y, 
nine zero. I'm gonna move that up to the side, G and Z. And as you can see, that's where the other cable come come out to actually control the actual speed of your fans. And normally what you've got at is a little dotty toggle that comes out the bottom of there, a little dotty toggle that comes out there. That is what we're going to actually make next. So let's hide these. So hide that, hide that, hide that, hide that, hide that. Because the first thing that we created is to scale everything else that we create will be to scale because basically you shrink it down until it looks right but you've got to have something that's the right scale otherwise things don't look right in the real world the lighting doesn't work things don't work you know it's just 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 one of those things right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a object and the object we're going to add is a cube so add a cube ba -ba -ba -ba, add mesh cube and this we're going to make into it into our little toggle but we're going to do it quite simply so go into edit mode select this face select that top face press I then scale that down press E move it up there press E again and you end up with that kind of shape Add the modifier and then subdivide the surface by one. Smooth shade. Sorry. Out of any mouth pressing tab. Smooth shade. And then grab that and sorry, grab it all. And scale in the Z direction until it becomes round again. That there is going to be our little toggle. The reason we kept it quite low detail is because it doesn't need to be high detail. If you want it to be really round and you've got a good computer, just increase that and it becomes round. Right. For this sake, I'm just going to apply that. So I think that's plenty. As you can see, that's a weird shape, but what we're going to do is add an array modifier now. Add the array modifier. Select that. Right, Z direction goes from top to bottom. The red line is the X direction, and the green line is the Y direction. So I want to go in the Z direction. So zero that out, that puts it all back in the center. Press the one key and that adds it up there and just shrink this down slightly I'm sorry down to 0.9 or 0.8 whatever you think looks real and then we increase this amount and as you can see we've got the we have the pull cord it to a decent length can leave that together unhide everything G and Z see these boxes here are actually two meters wide so the reason we can't see his model is because it's underneath it all. The scale of this is slightly wrong. That there, it's about 20 centimeters across. Now that again, it's not too bad. That's 0.2 of a meter is about 20 centimeters across. So, but this thing, as you can see, it's nearly two meters across. So that's absolutely massive. So if we divide that by 100, divide by 100, and divide that by 
100. G, Z. And where's it gone? It's there, but I can't see the rest of the model. Change that to zero to put it down again. And as you can see, it's still slightly big. So I'll shrink that down. Shrink it down. I'm going to set the origin to be in the center of the mass of the volume. And G and Z. What's up my princess? Mm -hmm. Mm. I'm just doing this tutorial. I will edit this out way after something to eat. Okay, some pan of chocks in the um, in the drawer if you want some. You can have cereal. You ain't got my crunchy nuts, have you? You took my crunchy nuts cornflakes. Make sure you leave a little bit of milk for mum for a coffee. Okay, now starting again. Right, so what we do is we take that edge, um, G and Z, to move it into the centre. And there you go, we've got the actual cord that hangs out at the bottom that actually switches the light on and off. Looks quite good. So I'm just going to duplicate that because we've got another one that comes out of the side there. So Shift D, Shift D controls it as no object. So G and X to move it in the X direction because that's going to actually go into that hole there. So right. The bottom of this one, I'm going to make that into a toggle. So what I'm going to do is apply that now. So apply the actual array modifier. That fixes the cord as one object. Go into edit mode. And the very bottom one here, I'm going to actually change this. So select the edge. In fact, I want to select that bottom one. P to separate it. And I'm going to call that the right, so that one there, this cube there is um, toggle, um, call it rope. For a bit, want for a better word, so I'll call that rope. And the bottom, we're going to, I think you call it a toggle, so T O G G O E, because we'll be using the toggle on that one and on the one that we just moved to the side there. So, right. so go into that model there need a bit more detail on that one so I'm going to go into it press A add a modifier subdivide surface again and just apply it because I need a bit more detail so apply yep. out of edit mode apply what I'm going to do is select the edge of that E and Z Control R Scale that E and Z Sorry not E and Z G and Z Control R Control R, uh, and then add modifier. In fact, no, I won't add a modifier. I'll call that the toggle. It's a bit shiny that now, but uh, I don't know. I quite like that actually. It looks quite, quite 
quite like the way that looks so I'm just going to leave it as it is that's the one key shift and D to duplicate it and G and Z sorry Z G and X to move a copy over to that one G and Z to move it slightly down there we go and get that one get that one apply that modifier take that one and take that one and then just join them by pressing join I did that by selecting both objects by holding shift key down and then joining them G and Z move it up to there press the one key to get to perspective Oops, sorry one key hold the shift down to actually get there G and X just going to take it up to there and then what I'm going to do is copy that top one out Shift and D, G and Z to move it up. Oops, sorry, G and Z. Then rotate it in the X direction. Sorry, rotate in the Y direction. G, Shift, D, Enter, G and Z. Rotate Y. And then just shift <coughs> shift and D. Just one more time and we'll just rotate into Y. And then G and X. there you go the toggle actually goes into the actual side of it this one like I say controls fan speed it needs to be slightly longer G and Z I'll just move it into it as you can see now we're getting something that looks a bit like the fan housing like to feed the pussy cat, Jess? Nope. Nope. Alright, I'll feed him in a minute. Her in a minute, I should say. Alright, the next thing we're going to do is the actual fan, uh, the fins on the fan. Same again, we'll just hide everything again and scale it down later on to actually fit. So hide, hide. B does box select so you can actually select lots of things and pressing H hides them. Alt H unhides everything. That's another way or you can just actually hit the bits and bobs like that. It's the motor uh, what's them other two things there? Cube one. Right. I'm gonna call that rope one. And I call the other one. Not the other one's already called rope, but join them together. I'll take to unhide everything. B to put box select, select all, and hide. Right. Add a mesh. Add a cube again. Right, these things are about a meter long, so um, what I'm going to do is change that to a meter, change that to a meter, and change that to a meter. So we're working with meter cube. As you can see, that's mouse too thick, so I'll scale Z, make it thinner, scale and Z, 
and I think they're about 15 centimeters long uh, wide so scale in the X direction until it looks about right just going to move that out G Y to move it out that way it'll be on the edge of the box so I'm just going to unhide the motor right, so unhide the motor as you can see it's a bit out of proportion so scale it in the X direction until it's in proportion like the fan would be that there I'm going to scale it in the Y direction about there still a bit thick so scale in the Z direction S and Z and that there is going to be our fan blade still think that's a bit thick so I'm going to scale it in the Z so it's nice and thin and then hide the motor again If we look at the reference image we've just uh, looked at online, this is actually one in my um, grandma's house or something like that. I think that yeah. This is actually one in my house. Still got an Artex ceiling, but they, that's how I wrote this house is. But there you go. Nineteen forties house. It's a very nice house. Though. Right. To get the actual shape of the fan, we will do that last. But first of all, we're gonna. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, subdivide this. Control R by about half, and move that so it's making about a third. And do another subdivision there, and then by Control R G G to move. Oops. See, Control R, GG, and what I'm going to do is select the, the bottom edge and the top edge, press the I key and then shrink it down. And that itself is going to be the actual indentation. So press extrude and scale in the Z direction. And I'm just going to indent them slightly. Now having both edges selected, you're indenting them both at the same time. So scale in the Z direction. As you can see, There you go. Next thing I'm going to do is subdivide this control R once, twice, that's by three, that's by four, five, six, and just keep doing it. Oopsie there, is it? I've subdivided about by 13. The reason I've done it by 13, it gives me a line in the bottom there. I'm just going to grab that edge, hit this up here, which is called proportional editing. What proportional editing allows you to actually grab an edge, so G, but it affects other edges, so G and Y, and move it out as you can see. I'm moving my mouse wheel and that makes this point and you can get all sorts of effects like that that's roughly a fan shape I've done the same on the other side to get a circular shape so select the center one 
G and Y. So you can have any shape you actually desire. I'm going for that kind of shape. Control R. I'm going to move an edge that way and control R. Move an edge that way. This sharpens up the edges. And then in the center, this one, I want sharp edges on both sides, so I'm just going to cut that into two. As you can see, that's into two. Shut that. Other way of doing it is you can actually enter there, you can make that 20 or thing here, but I'm just keeping it at two. Right. All we need to do is we're going to actually make one of these actual fans and then we're going to duplicate it. So add a mesh, all I'm going to do is add a cube again, scale that down, scale it down, scale it. Oh, gosh, X, delete it. X vertices. As you can see, I'm still in the object, so add an object. The mesh I'm going to add is a. No, I think I will do a cube. Right. Scale it right down. It defaults on a two meter cube for some reason in Blender. And this here is going to be the actual handle that goes on the fan. Um, it's on the base. It's bolted to the base, so G and Z. scale it down so it's the right th thickness so hit the one key the full stop key gets you in close scale in the X direction scale in the Z direction in the Z direction and G and Z to move it up and what I'm going to do is G and X, so Y, move it that way. And I'm going to scale that in the Y direction. And you can make a fancy shape similar to the way we did with it with the actual edge of this one, and that's what we're going to do. But first of all, I'm going to extrude this out. So I've select that face by selecting face select. The Y. E and Y. E and Y. And this is going to actually be the bracket that attaches it to the housing. And Y. As you can see, it hasn't got much of a shape at the minute. So I'll just grab that edge and grab that edge. Scale it in the y direction, uh, sorry, x direction. Give it that shape, and then grab that edge and that edge and scale it in the x direction. Select that edge, control R to bind it by two. <coughs> control R, subdivide it. In fact, I'm not going to subdivide it yet. I'll just control Z undoes a lot, a lot of things, so I'm just going for the rough shape first. So. Select the edges. And scale and X. By using the mouse wheel, we can actually, on the proportional editing there, we can actually scale in different bits, and that's what I'm doing here now. Scale in that. 
I'll do the same with this one so I'm just going to scale in them edges individually so scale X Control R subdivide it by 2 by either hitting the 2 key Control R by 2 press that edge there face select press that edge shift scale X There we go. E and Y. And all I'm doing here is I'm actually making the shape that's going to actually come out the bottom of the fan. Control R, make a subdivision there. Control R, make a subdivision there. And then I'm going to select these edges G and Y. G and Z. Oh, sorry. I'm just going to get rid of that face. So X, e, X, faces. And this is like cutting an hole in the actual shape. X and faces. Just to give it a bit of definition. Now what I'm going to do is fill this hole back in again by selecting that edge there by pressing the Alt key and the left mouse button and then I'm pressing Shift, Alt and the left key. For some reason the Shift never shows up. And then Bridge Edge Loops. If we add a Subdivide modifier into this now, add Subdivide modifier, Surface modifier, as you can see it makes a little round hole in there makes them a bit rounder but the definition's not good on the edges so control and R divide that by two makes the definition on the edge better same on the inside face get rid of the subdivision to make it easier to see control R divide it by two add back the subdivision I'd increase this to two because we're making a fancy shape. If you come out of edit mode, you can see that we've got that kind of shape. I think you'll agree that looks quite ornate. You can make it more ornate by uh, doing more subdivisions, control R, and moving edges in, so control R. So if I grab them six edges there. For instance, then move them in the Y direction by pressing the G and the Y. See, I'm making different shapes. And it's up to you how much actual patterning you want to do, but I think that's enough for me. So what I'm going to do is apply that modifier. So apply that modifier. Sorry. Got to be out of edit mode by pressing the Tab key. Apply the modifier and we've got the actual shape right the fan there what I'm going to do is control and um, sorry look from the top this allows you to actually look at both sides at once and then what I'm going to do is box select a load of faces because what you'll notice about a fan is that it's a at an angle. At the minute this is not an angle so I'm going to rotate all them by Y and 
I'm just going to put a little bit of a twist on it. For some reason I've selected an edge there, so I'm just going to deselect all that. Look from the top again by pressing the 7 key. Box select. Try that again. R R by the Y. And just put a slight twist in it. See, rotate and just make this a little bit bigger so it encompasses it and then rotate in the y direction just a little bit just a slight angle and then what I'm going to do is select that piece there select that piece there and then join them together And we will call this the blade. The other thing that we need to actually do is attach the actual nuts and bolts. And we're going to do that simply. Because we don't need eye detail on this, we could actually create the screw. But what's the point? Because we're not going to be looking closely at this thing. We're going to be looking at it from a distance. It's going to be part of a scene. So just object, add in, mesh, UV sphere, doesn't need to be that complicated so we just change it to 8, scale it down so it's about screw size, the dot goes closer, 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 G and Z to fetch it through the other model so we can see it and if we look from the bottom by pressing shift and 7 it's like CTRL and 7 what we can do is actually move the screws into the places where we want them I think I'll have one there one there and one somewhere there so G let's move it into place there G, move it up. In fact, do I want to put it just there? I think I will. I'll put it there, like in the centre of that circle. Uh, G and Z, I've moved it slightly wrong. G and Z. So you've got to imagine that's just the head of a screw. We can always put the picture of a head of a screw on top of it just to get a bit more realize it, realism. So if we look by CTR on a 7, looking from the button, G, sorry, Shift and D to duplicate it, G and X, X is the red line, moves it over there, getting to about the right place, and that'll do. And then I'm gonna duplicate that again, Shift and D, press Enter, G, and Y to move it down and G and X to move it into the center roughly and G and, and Y to move it slightly up so it's in the right place and that's the, the screws that are actually fastening are the screw heads so you, you haven't modeled the old screw we're only going to see the heads, so why you could even actually cut that in half. It's just easier to actually let, just do it with the actual uh, the, the ball, you know what I mean? The, or, or the UV sphere. That's the reason I've done that. So, the next thing we're going to do is so we've got the slight twist on there, we've got the screws in there. The thing we haven't got is the bolts on top of here, but we're just going to bolt it to the actual frame. But if we look from the side, what we're going to do is rotate this in the y direction until this becomes flat. So press the actual 3 key to look from the side, and then we're going to join the blade to the the two thingies, so join 
let's join them up. I think one of these has not been joined, but let's have a look. Which one is it? That one. So select that and the thing and join. Uh, for some reason, it's all called it a sphere, so I'm just going to change that back to blade. I just selected them in the wrong order, but that happens from time to time. And you just have to rename the thing. So we're looking from the side by pressing the 3 key, rotate in the Y direction and we just rotate it until it becomes flat, as flat as you can make it. And there we are, we've got the actual blade at an angle. Another way to rotate, I'll just undo that to knock it flat again. Three is you can press the R key. So let's say rotate in the Y direction by 10 degrees. See, as you can see, that was too much. Go Z, rotate in the Y direction by 5 degrees. Not enough. Rotate in the Y by another one, two degrees, not enough. Rotate by Y by one degree. And as you can see, that's another way of doing it. Right. And you achieve the same thing. So, there we go. That there, I think it would be gold. The other one's white. So, L key lets you actually select things. So, you know, it's like that. I've so selected there part of a mesh, and then if I add the actual brass to that, so add the brass to that. As you can see, it's added brass to everything. That's because we haven't got an actual other colour created, but we'll do that now. So let's make it a flat white. So, we've got that up there. We're going to add a different text, uh, texture to it. So, I'll press the plus key, put new, got flat white, slight shine on it, quite rough, and we'll call that white base white. So now if you're actually going to edit mode, select thing and then press the L key and you actually put base white, then you assign that, then that'll be white, that'll still be gold. And that's the way a lot of people do it. And you've got like a copper effect. That there has got a square effect because it's not smooth. So we'll just select all this and smooth shade. See, that's it, everything's smooth. There we go, we've got a fan. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate this, but first of all, we need to put it in the right position. So let's unhide everything by pressing Alt and H. As you can see, we're going to move that G, Y, so it's in about the right place, G and Z. Right, you can add the actual bolt detail here, G and Z, G and Y. You can add the bolt detail there if you wish. But most of the time, you wouldn't even see that detail because you'd be looking from the base of the room. I mean, to add the detail, all I'd do is um, say we're adding a bolt, add to there, we'd select a mesh. It depends entirely up to you. If it's not seen, sometimes I don't actually add the detail. So um, in this case, you'd have a cylinder. Um, bolts have six faces, so we just change that to six. It's the head of it, scale and Z. 
scale and Z. Um, they're normally a silver colour, so I'm just going to add in a silver colour. So I'll just create a silver colour. Bolts are normally grey in colour, fairly shiny, so metallic. Uh, take the roughness down. Now you can add a lot of detail on things if you want, but you know, I'm just going to, for this experiment, um, I don't have lost. I've lost my bolt. Right, it'll be a cube. Um, so sorry, a cylinder, because that's what it was. There's me. Yeah, there it is. G and Z. Oh, that's the wrong cylinder. Uh, cylinder one. Right. This is why it's important to name things, because you just lose things. Right. As you can see, I'm just totally naff this up G and Z <sighs> what's happening to this thing alright cylinder 1 where's it gone cylinder 1 have I hidden it I have hidden it that's why I can't see it right. G and Z G, Z. Let's take it out of here. And scale it down. Just like that. Edge, Control, R. See what I've done. All right. And scale that down. So add the note down. Like I said, this detail you probably wouldn't need. Scale it down. G and Y. Move it down there. Scale it up slightly. G and Z. Let's just look from the top since it's easier sometimes. Scale it up because it's a bolt. G. Rotate it in the Z direction just to put it offset, just to make it look real. G. And Z. Shift and D, duplicate it. G. And X. And there you go. Rotate in the Z direction to make it slightly off from the other one so it looks real. Grab that one, grab that one, G and Z. And just take it down until it just starts to vanish. And there's your two bolts that fasten it on. So I'll just join them together. So select that one, select that one. Uh, select that one, select that one, select that one. Select the last and join. Aha! So the last thing you select is the actual thing that names it, so that explains it. And just to give it higher definition, you select on there. Select that edge. I and just take it in and G and Z. Still got proportional editing on that, that's why I affected that. So select that G and Z. See, and that's just the end of the bolt. Uh, I scale G and Z. And there you are. You've got a bolt. I think this fan blade is maybe a little bit big, so I'm just going to scale it down slightly by pressing the S key and then scaling it all down. Right. So as you can see, 
This here is the wrong way around. This is totally the wrong way around because the bolt should be on the top and the actual the nuts and things should be on the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is select that in its entirety and rotate in the Y direction by 180 degrees and that puts it to the right orientation. So G and Y, I'm oh, sorry X to move that central. Looking from the top it's easier to actually judge it. G and X and G and Y to move it back into the right place. I think the fan is still huge so I'm going to scale that down even further which means that I'm going to have to alter it slightly so I'm going to set the origin to the actual center of the mass uh, the volume to put it in the center to make it easier to ma manipulate so G and move it I think that's about in the right position look from the side as you can see that's not connected And for some reason that's gone around the wrong way again so rotate y by 180 3 g and z there we go and now that's attached to there about the right size looking quite good not so sure about that actual the shine of that one so I'm going to change that white I think so the base base white I'm going to make it really rough because I wish to and I'm going to put a subdivision cut in there just to fetch the definition slightly better control R in there but you tweak these at the end just to actually make things look more real it's like there there's like a funny shape there so control R see if we can get rid of it there you go brings the definition in and same on the side there so I'm just going to control R and scale it out there and control R and GG to scale up oh, sorry best to scale it in slightly there that's it just brings the definition of things in right we've nearly finished this fan off um, we haven't got the lights attached yet but we're going to do that last uh, but the next thing we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this four times around here now I've recently found a, a thing called a spin tool so if I select everything there, hit this spin tool, and then select that, as you can see I put nine, there's nine fans in there, but I only want four, so if we actually times 90, uh, divide 90 by uh, 360 by four, we get 90. But we only want to actually produce another three blades, so 90 times 3 is 270. And then we change that to 3. And there we are. We've got four blades. Select the arrow back up here to take it there. And we've got four blades. So you haven't had to do that work all over again four more times. We've just duplicated that four times. Really, really good tool, this spin tool. It's good for spiral staircases and all sorts of things. Once did a water wheel with it as well, doing the little buckets. Very good. And that's another tutorial. I keep saying I'm going to do the water wheel tutorial one of these days, but it's going to be a long tutorial. Now, right, lastly, we're going to create the lamps. 
and this bit I haven't done myself so let's just select everything and hide it press the H key start again right the lamp right. add mesh um, and what we're going to do is make the lamp so if we do a cylinder because it's the most thing it's still got six sides which is not enough so change that to 32 makes it more circular the lamp it's going to have a bulb in it and everything like that but first of all let's just quickly scale it down grab that edge I to inset and then E in the Z direction take it up there G Z scale it down until it vanishes and now what we've got is that kind of shape which is a cone now a lot of these lamps on these old-fashioned fans are quite fancy and actually figured out how I'm going to actually achieve that yet but let's have a good look control and seven if we grab this edge this edge this edge oops sorry this edge and this edge and then put proportional editing on and G and Z and make the circle slightly bigger yep and we've got that kind of shape control R in the outside in fact I don't think I need the inside at the minute just to actually if I get rid of this inside so X delete vertices and now we've just got the shape on the outside because we're just going to make the shape of the light uh, control R scale that down control R scale that down see it's got like a lily shape now and a lot of these fancy old lights have that kind of shape so I'm just going to scale it in the X direction Scale X, scale Y, there we go, it's got like a flower effect, I just don't add a, the thickness in modifier, the thickness modifier is actually at the little spanner here, add modifier, so, not subdivide surface, wrong one, add the modifier, solidify and you decide how thick the wall wants to be and in this case I'm going to make it that thick smooth shade it add an edge to sharpen that edge up I don't think I'll sharpen the inside edge up and then add a subdivide modifier in fact I'll apply that one first Add a subdivide surface modifier. There we go. That's getting a bit more organic. Control R. This is lamp shape. Uh, I'm just going to get rid of the top of this. So X only faces same with that face X only faces and then I'm going to connect, connect these two so select that edge alt look from the side G and Z to fetch them up to the same sorry proportional editing on take that off G and Z take them up to the same height select that edge select that edge and then bridge edge loops put, put some face in between them and we 
if I just go into the out of edit mode and there you've got it that's my actual shape of my light I don't know whether it um, question is do I give it that kind of shape so scale that out make it that kind of shape mm, I don't know I will leave it there apply the modifier out of edit mode by pressing the tab key apply the modifier there we go could do with this being glassy so how do I like it glassy so let's just do a new call it glass and the opacity or transmission should make it translucent mm, transmission is that is that actually see through now that's the question shake smooth I don't know if it is or it isn't actually but I just put this on to uh, rather than cycles I'm going to put it into Eevee Eevee shading well, I'll work on the glass colour later on but uh, I'll work on the glass in a minute. Don't need to work on it just yet. Right, the next thing I'm going to add is the um, the thing that holds the glass, which is the actual rim. So I'm going to add a mesh, and the mesh is going to be a cylinder. Scale that in the Z direction. Scale G and Z. don't need that face there and I don't need X on the face and I don't need that face there on the face because that's the ring that actually the so, so you want control R extrude and scale it down E scale it down E scale it down I say when you subdivide things it's always a good idea to actually have close edges if you want things to stay sharp then when people do buy your model or whatever and subdivide it you don't get any weird uh, things happening so it makes their job a lot easier now, smooth shade that one by pressing the right click and as you can see that now is the th the thing that this is sitting in it sit the uh, sitting on Normally there's three screws because this light G Z normally is flat here and has a little rim round it, so we're just gonna add that now. So scale that down. Control R and select this edge, make a little rim that the actual bot the little nuts would catch in because it's got to have a bit of realism. So E scale. Control R. E scale. And that's the little rim that the actual the, the nuts will catch into. So let's move that one back down. Add a thickness modifier. Add. Solidify. Yep, and there we go. Add a bit of thickness to it. Maybe a bit too much thickness. Slightly down. G and Z. G and Z. And then all we need to do is add three screws that are actually going to go into that groove. So uh, we'll make a quick screw. So add 
Mash. UV sphere. G. And Z. Go into edit mode. Select this. Hold on a minute. I think I'm in the wrong. No. Go into edit mode. Select that edge. Select that edge by pressing the Alt key. X to delete it. Vertices. And then select that edge there. Press the L key to select the thing because we don't need that. So X to delete that. Select that edge there. E Z. E Z. And then scale that down. That's why we're just making a quick screw. So E Z. And then F3 grid fill if it will grid fill. Yeah, so just to make the base of it. That's my screw. I wanted to look, make it look a bit more like a screw. You could even just put a little indent there. G Z. So I said. Select that edge there, 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 that edge there. G Z. So E Z. Then add a subdivide modifier, subdivide surface modifier, and you end up with like a screw shape. Entirely up to you. It's just a bit simple that one. That shade smooth. And you just scale it down. Right, let's have a look. Add the colour to it. Just metal. Let's change that to metal. Scale it up slightly. G Z. In fact, I think it's actually a nut. That actually, I'm just going to delete that because it's not a bombing screw. It's a nut. X delete. And what we could do is actually duplicate the actual nut that we've got, but we haven't got one. So add in a mesh. Cylinder, make it six. Yeah, a nut would be a better thing to have on it. We're going to make this into a proper nut though this time. So, right, scale G Z. Troll R G Z. Select all these edges. And I point zero one and select the opposite edges. And I point zero one. Edges, all the edges, extrude individuals, extrude along normals even. And then control R, control R, select all these edges, all the edges around the side by pressing the Alt key, scale it down. G, Z, and move it up. A to select all, scale it down, add the metal colour. G, Z. There we are. And then when we subdivide this, it should keep its shape. 
but I don't know if it will. Let's see. Design. Sorry. Add subdivide surface. That's causing a problem on this. See that top face, so X, delete only faces. And what I'm going to do is, not, with that top face selected, I'm going to 3, sorry, press F3, and grid fill that area. Tab. What the hell is happening here? Oh, I know what's happened. Control R, E, Z. Smooth, select, that's what's wrong with. Smooth shade it. Control R. Control R. Control R. This is just showing you how to add detail to something. G, C, Control R. It's circular and to add the the edges, which then brings it more like a, a G. Control R, G, G. And as you can see, the more cuts you add, G, G, the sharper it becomes. But what you are doing is adding a lot of detail to your model that's probably not necessary depending how quickly, uh, close you need to get to it. Control R. Control R. GG. Control R. Control R. Now select that center model there. F3, grid fill. So I'll just fill it. F just fills it. Control R. Control R. There you are, you've got a, a simple nut. I'll scale that down. G, X, G, rotate in the Y direction by 90. G, Z. G X G Z Alright. Now I've got that created. Do that again. So go into edit mode. A to select all. Go into the actual spin tool. This time we want to actually do it by three. So if you actually divide 360 by three, you get 120. But you only have to du duplicate it twice. So then we need to actually times the 120 by two, which is 240. So set that to 240 and then put two because you only want two duplicates of it and there we have it we've got the actual three little nuts that hold the actual the actual glass bulb on they screw in that holds the actual that goes into the groove and that f fastens it on so fasten that together Oops. 
Select that one, press the shift key, press the shift key, press the shift key. Move it down slightly because there's a bit too much of a gap there. So, G, Z, and then your glass part comes through it. And then I'm just going to join these on and call it the lamp. Join. Just make sure I've got everything selected now. And then join. What the hell has happened there? Oh, I understand what's happened. some reason it's duplicated that bolt there tab now has it duplicated anything else that's the question hold on a minute ah, that's I understand what I've done right okay and do everything going to separate these by loose parts so it gets all the integrity right. so box select all them and join there we go that's the lamp go into edit mode I'm just going to quickly make the bulb so I'm just going to grab that edge there. In fact, I'll grab that edge there. Shift D to duplicate it. And then P by selection to separate it. Out of edit mode. E and Z. I'm sorry. Select that edge. And all we're going to do is now make the bulb. So, E, Z, sorry, to be an edit mode to do this. So, into edit mode, A to select all, E, Z. E, Z, scale, E, Z, E, Z, scale, and I'm just going to grid fill that by putting grid fill. That makes me bulb, smooth shade. And that's my little bulb in the middle, just to make it look real. And out of the back side of here, it's got a little rim. E Z. E Z. Scale. Control R, and that there is the part that attaches to the lamp. Easy, easy, sorry, easy, easy, and then E, scale it down. And that's the bit that attaches to the lamp. And then E, Z, G, Z. And 
Right, now we've got the lamp. Join it all together. Block. Join. And for some reason it's attached it to the light. Take this all in the x direction. I'm stopping recording because my cat's just fetched in a mouse and I'm just going to have to take it off it. So I've now just took the actual mouse off my cat and then released it back into the wild. And I'll start to get start recording again. Right. Next thing we're going to do is actually. Um, oh, give me a minute. <laughs> Is spalt it? No, I don't think it was his that spalt it. Right, now the actual mouse has been released back into the wild and everybody's back alright, we will finish off this tutorial. Right. Um, the right, what we've got here, right, as you can see, we've got one lamp. Um, what we want to do is duplicate this a, another three times. So, what I'm going to do is move it in the y direction, like so. Um, add in H, um, scale it down so it actually fits to the actual fan that we've already made sorry scale scale right. I'll make its location back into the actual center of the there what I've done is actually gone on the item and changed its location back to the center hit the full stop key puts you into the there so G and Z and then we want to scale it down and move it to the edge fat control 7 to look from the button G and Y just don't understand why this is not centralizing so much so what I'm gonna do G 
and Z. Well, I think it has its offset on the center. So object set origin. Well, sorry, object set origin. Mass of volume that puts it in the center of the light. And then if I centralize this now, zero, zero, zero. G and Z, and I'm just going to scale this up slightly. Now my dog's wandered in, so I'm just going to let it out because it needs a toilet, I think. Come on, Ellie. There right, you go. And you let one dog out, and another one comes in. But never mind. Right. Right. Hit the one key. G and Y. Uh, G and Z. I'm just doing it so the actual edge of that bulb there just goes through the edge of the G and Y. G and Z. G and Y. And there we go. And now all we need to do is duplicate that three times. So go back into edit mode. A to select all. Go into the spin tool again. Hit the plus. And then we delete, divide the 360 by 360 by 3, which makes 120, times it by 2 makes 240. I don't understand what that's done there. Duplicates. Ah, that's right, yeah. And make that into the two. And as you can see, go back into the arrow there. And we've got three equally placed lights. Just add a light underneath it. Modeling. Add mesh. So I'm just added an area light just actually light it up so I can show you a bit more and as you can see that's the ceiling fan more or less done very simple model but if you put that into a room you know add a room mesh cube um, you know for instance just get rid of that wall X delete Faces, faces, for instance, X faces, it's like that's a roof, you know. I mean, we've got the area light there, GZ. Now, if you move the area light. And as you can see, yeah. what's your room light? You know, what you could do is delete this light. X, delete. And I add more lights, but a, say an area light. Scale it down, change the shape of the area light. Or even make a spotlight. G, Z, and take 
X. In fact, let's just add the lights we'll add is just um, a point scale. It. Change the radius so it's small. G. Move it so it's inside the light. G. Shift D. G. Shift D. And G. So now we've got three area lights, all at wrong places, but make them into the bulb. I mean, the other thing that we could do is actually make the actual the lights themselves an emission, you know. So, G, You know, and all we've done there is we've just moved them into into the light to where the bulbs are, and in the ra render, if you just added a different like the bloom effect, maybe turn down the brightness of the lights. Oh, there's the point lights. Select them on there, turn down the brightness of them to say five watts or two watts. Change that to two as well. To two watts. And render it out. Oh, sorry, the camera's in the wrong place. So, what I'm going to do is add a camera in object, add a camera G, make the camera look at the actual lamp itself. So, let's have a look. Um, what's that called? That's the motor. So, we'll make the light look at the motor. So, add that. Add object constraint, track to motor. This always has to be Z minus Z, and this always has to be Y. Don't know why, but that. So track to motor, making that Z, making that Y. When you actually look through the camera, You look through the camera in question, and as you can see, and if we render it out, we've basically got our room light, got all the shadows from the room light, and depending how bright or dim you want it, you just select the light and change it. So. And that also produces light on the room. Quite a simple tutorial. I like say adding a texture to the actual fins and everything makes it a lot more real. Making this a glass will also make it more real. There we go. I'm just going to move that camera so I get a good angle on it. So select the camera. Look through the camera. Gee. 
Just in the lights until I get the des desired effect I want. That'll do. And I'll render that. What happens if I render it in cycles? Cycles does light. It's just, and can give you a better effect. Or a worse effect. So point light. Back to either end of the other. Point two. This is going to be the final render, I think. Point eight. And point eight. For some reason, the bloom thing seems to have vanished again. F12. Let's see what the render looks like. And as you can see, got some shadow, but not too much. You keep messing about with things, you get the desired effect. That I think I'm going to use for my thumbnail, so I'm just going to wait for my actual things to vanish. And then I'm going to save that image. Like I said, please subscribe to my video. And I can't say this enough, um, it does help me actually uh, carry on with actually designing my things. Thank you for joining me on our trip to creating this ceiling fan. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe. And if you didn't, don't. Thank you for joining me. Bye.